the first piano was very interesting. I know that's going to be a very hard act to follow, but I guarantee that the two panelists on this panel are going to be just as interesting and captivating. <laughs> Hello, my name is Gina Kim. I am an assistant professor of East Asian Studies here at Smith College. I teach Korean history and East Asian history, cultural history of early 20th century East Asia. Currently, I'm working on a project entitled Translating Tradition, uh, which is also a course that I have developed that I'm teaching this semester. And this, this research project looks at contemporary Korean media, uh, such as film, art, and literature to uh, explore how they restage, translate, or as in the previous panel, recycle the past or history. Uh, so I'm very interested in this concept of tradition, as the panel is entitled. Um, it is my great honor to introduce the two artists for the panel Beyond Tradition, Ms. Jiha Moon and Ms. Miwa Hanako. Jiha, Jiha Moon was born in Tegu, Korea, and currently lives and works in Atlanta, Georgia. She received her BA from Korea University, MFA from Ihua Women's University, which Smith has an affiliation with. And she also received a second MA and MFA from University of Iowa. Uh, what immediately stands out for me in viewing Jiha's paintings is the fascinating way in which she brings together what seemingly opposites she mostly works on acrylic paint on hanji paper, which is a traditional mulberry paper of Korea. Her paintings are bold, yet lyrical in their brush strokes and color. They combine elements of the East and West, present and past, high literary art and pop art, etc. Like this work called Alice Alice of 2010. For a close-up, we see an iconography of peach. Uh, it's a symbol of immortality or everlasting life, in many, which appears um, in many East Asian art. One of the greatest surviving early landscape paintings of Korea, created by An Kyun in 1447, is entitled Painting of a Journey in a Dream to the Peach Orchard, which when I looked it up was very reminiscent of some of Jiha's work, especially in the brush, brush strokes. Um, but the dash of color on the tips of the peach in particular adds an ironic twist, at least for me. Uh, her paintings, the colors are bright, almost plastic-like, as Jiha described to me earlier during lunch. Uh, but it's also very reminiscent of Korean traditional dyes that are used in Korean traditional clothing, called hanbok, and also in collage art. The neon colors might allude to the contemporary plastic culture, as Jiha alluded to, uh, and neon lights that are so pervasive in uh, large metropolitan centers like New York City, Seoul, or even Tokyo. So here are the colors of this painting, the blue peony, which is, I thought, very, very ironic because there is no such thing as a blue peony. <laughs> um, but here the colors are, again, very uh, bold, uh, neon-like, but at the same time, uh, the colors are, I think, resonate with traditional Korean art as well. And then lastly, I would like to bring your attention to this painting called Lucky Delights 2008. What stood out for me is the collage itself, the fan-shaped hanji paper that has been pasted onto another hanji paper. Uh, um, and this fan shape is not, it's, it's the typical of a Korean fan. Next, I would like to introduce Ms. Miwa Hanako. Miwa received her training both in Japan and in Great Britain. She received her degree in interactive arts at the University of Wales. And Ms. Hanako, Ms. Miwa Hanako, 
uh, comes from a long lineage of porcelain artists. For over 12 generations, um, Miwa's family has uh, practiced the ceramic tradition of hagi ware, a style typically associated with tea ware, um, as you have read in the program introductions. What is interesting about hagi ware is that it traces its roots to Korea when Korean potters were brought to Japan in the 16th century uh, during the Hideyoshi, um, Toyotomi Hideyoshi's invasion of Korea between 1592 to 1598. Um, of course, the Koreans call, it, call, call this the Pottery Wars, and they say that the Korean potters were kidnapped and uh, installed in Japan. I think they, um, in Japanese histories, they use different language. <laughs> However, whatever the case, I think it's a fascinating point of uh, cultural exchange. And um, I think this is something that we can talk a little bit more about during the panel discussion. Um, her, Miss um, Miwa's uh, uncle, as you have read, was the first living national treasure, uh, as well as her father, her grandfather, oh, I'm sorry, her great uncle was the first national living treasure and her uh, grandfather is the current living national treasure. Um, and her father is also a practicing porcelain artist. Um, no, but as we can see Ms. from Ms. Um, Miwa's art, um, hagi ware, which stem from practical utility or tea ware, is no longer just tea wear, but it has uh, uh, evolved and as exemplify, exemplified by Hanako's work. Uh, this work in particular, Mio, um, I think it's a term that is very difficult to translate directly into English. Um, it might be translated as some mysterious or wonder, wonder extraordinary, um, um, is I think commonly, the lotus is commonly associated with Buddhism, and it's a symbol of sp spirituality and spiritual purity. Um, and this is very much evident in her other works as well. The work Love Lotus, which can be seen at the Smith College Museum of Art, is an installation of ceramic lotus flowers, which is um, placed on screening mirrors of stainless steel. Um, all, as you read in the, intro, uh, in the program, it uh, states it's, a, uh, it's an allegory, allegory of purity of love symbolized by lotus blossom uh, in perpetuity, but what I found very interesting about this particular work, as well as this one, is that it really recreates the lotus pond, but in a, um, in a way that uh, highlights the purity aspect, because you can see through the bottom in these ponds, whereas in a pond, uh, in a natural setting, you're unable to see the other side. So um, indeed, I think Hanako's work is ethereal and begs us to step back uh, and breathe in the beauty of all the lotus flowers. So please give a warm hand to our um, applause to our two panelists. The way we have planned this panel is for um, us to engage in a conversation uh, um, about their artwork and their experiences as artists, female artists coming from Korea and Japan, but really practicing their art world in an international setting. Uh, so for example, Jiha is currently based in Atlanta and Hanako, although she lives in Japan, her artwork is shown internationally. 
So I will begin with a question that um, I am very curious about because I am grappling with the word or the concept of tradition. What is this tradition? Uh, whenever we think of the word tradition, we think about the past, something outdated, uh, something historical. Uh, sometimes we think we associate the word tradition with um, primitive uh, or third world. Uh, so I'm wondering how you as artists, conceptualize con uh, tradition? Do you want me to answer that first? Sure. Uh, who, who actually, I prepared the paragraph, but I don't think it's useful anymore, so I'm just gonna... <laughs> <laughs> well, like um, Gina, you explained tradition as old form and then history and past. And actually, that's what I kind of use it as um, like um, you know, tradition. Because when I look at other people's work, they're engaged with their tradition. That's how I imagine like the word tradition in my head. For example, like you know, Christmas is one of the biggest like um, Western tradition for me. But then it has its own life when it goes to Asian culture. Like it transforms something weird, and it kind of takes its own life. And I think my main interest is something like that. It's like kind of transforming a different culture, and takes its own life, and then like how it affects to people in a way. And also at the same time, uh, tradition is um, you know how people understand another people's culture like as past, uh, which is in a way kind of true because um, when people ask me what your work is about, and I use the tradition a lot, like because the, that's the way they describe my work, so it become more familiar to me, <laughs> like how others uh, receive my work that way. Although I didn't really start my work um, more traditional way because I wasn't traditionally trained. Korean painter. My major was in Korea, like painting, like painting and printmaking, drawing. But by using the material, it's meaningful, and then the color that I wanted to use, and somehow it kind of categorized with the memory or experience with the viewer, and there are four, they are trying to read me as one of those category. For example, the reason why the color black, I couldn't use it for a long time is because I was afraid that people engage the color black as Asian calligraphy too fast. And as a person, you know, they ask me, where are you from? And I say, well, I'm from South Korea. But then I always feel like left out because that's not all about me as a person. Like I have a whole bunch of layers of myself. You know, I'm from South Korea, but I left the country when I was 26 and I was I had my early adulthood there and I fully grown up there and then I had like college education and all my friends and everything but the language changed like any other form like they have lots of slang different culture going on so every time I go back to Korea I want like you know I kind of encounter my own problem